Even though bodybuilders might not be caught up to the latest science, I believe they were always a few steps ahead of science. In fact, science research is usually inspired by techniques bodybuilders first popularized. And it's the same story in this current science hyped muscle building technique called lengthened partials. A lot of new evidence suggests that it's even better than a standard full range of motion. So in this video, I want to explain why I think it works and how I use it in my training and some reservations I have. What exactly are long length partials? Well, they're pretty simple actually. Let's say you're doing a hack squat. A full range of motion would be when you go all the way down and all the way up, going from straight relaxed position to fully stretched hamstrings touching your calves position. Now you can split that full range of motion. Doing a squat in the top half would be short lengths and partials because the quads are more contracted and doing a squat in the bottom half would be long length partials because the quads are more stretched. Or in the chest press machine, the starting position is the relaxed short length partial and the stretched position or the long length partial is the bottom position because that's where the chest muscles are fully stretched. Not all the muscle dynamics are the same. For example, the triceps is stretched at the starting position so the long length partial would be the top half not the second half so we want to think of which part of the movement stretches the muscle the most and that would be the long length partial i have been guilty of believing that full range of motion is the way to go for years now but with the growing body of evidence suggesting that long length partials is contributing more to building muscles than full range of motion I have to revise my position. Because to this point, there have been eight published studies on partial range of motion, and seven of those showing that partial range of motion is better than full range of motion, and one showing no difference. The latest is this randomized controlled trial by Cassiano and all in 2023 on 42 untrained women, showing that they increased their muscle size by 15.2% for the long length partial, compared to 6.7 for the full range of motion, which is crazy to me given how I was so sure about full range of motion, but that's how science works. And in 2024, Dr. Mild Wolf and colleagues published a systematic review, which is still in preprint, meaning it's still being reviewed, but it's worth taking a look at. Reviewing all eight studies and found that training long length partial is more advantageous even compared to full range of motion, which in retrospect, would make sense since full range of motion could have been working great just because it includes the lengths and partials but this is yet to be confirmed the thing is that's not new at all bodybuilders have been doing this for years if you grew up watching john meadows like me you would know that he loved doing these long lengths partials and if you saw jay cutler's training videos you will see him doing this all the time their argument was that this way you keep constant tension on the muscle what long length partial isn't though it's not a cheat rep all these studies are showing that the stretch position is what works not the short relaxed position so doing squats like this is not going to work this is just ego lifting long length partials aren't easier than the full range of motion if anything they're actually harder because you eliminate the small rest you take when you lock out after you finish a rep so you have to control the weight throughout the movement don't just move the weight now i wouldn't recommend doing this in every exercise for example on squats it would be quite dangerous because if you reach failure in this position, there's no going up again. Or in a bench press, it's going to be tricky and gonna hurt you if you fail and you're training alone. So I would leave this for leg extension, hex squats, or Bulgarian squats for legs, or any dumbbell movement for chest, or Smith machine bench press, where you can safely and easily fail. Also for Romanian deadlifts, it's fine, since if you fail, you can just leave the weight on the ground and you will be fine. So there are three methods I use links and partials in my training. The first method, I use them at the end of every set for accessory exercises to squeeze in a couple more reps when I fail using full range of motion because your muscle probably still has some juice left in the tank even after failure. I love using them on seated leg curls. When I can't get any more reps, I will squeeze in a couple more reps in the stretch position because usually hamstrings still have some juice left even after failure. But it's very important to keep your form intact. Don't use momentum to get more reps. I also use Use them in dumbbell bicep curls just going halfway up to get those extra gains it's a bit similar to the 20 ones exercise if you were doing that at some point but without the short partial and my favorite machine to use this in is the chest machine press because of how deep the stretch i get on my chest doing that 
After I reached the usual stopping point for the full range of motion, I will just keep going in the stretch position until I can't get the weight up anymore. I wouldn't really recommend you using this in every exercise in your workout, especially not in big compound movements since this will impact your performance and fatigue levels, so start slow and build week to week. The second method, I use them for selected exercises as an intensifier for my workout. For example, one or two exercises for the day, especially in leg day, the fatigue will be way too high if I do more than that. So I will use them on leg extensions, leg curls, and for the rest of the exercises, I will use the full range of motion. I would recommend you use this method if you haven't done lengthened partial before. It would be kind of a soft introduction rather than a crash course. The third method, which is using them in all the exercises. I would use this one only if I'm not doing any free weight exercises. So each rep of each exercise, you only go halfway up in the stretch position. You will need to go a bit heavier to keep the rep range in the 6 to 15 rep range. I usually like to do this on the Smith Machine squat so I can safely do partials and in the light of all this new evidence, it will also make sense to use them in something like cable bicep curls. It's better to go a bit further back and get a deeper stretch in your biceps and go only halfway up. As a bonus method, lengthened partials lend itself really nicely with one of the time-saving techniques which is wrist pause sets. Now this will be very intense, so use it very, very sparingly, and I wouldn't really recommend you using this unless your sleep and nutrition are in check. Wrist pause sets is when you pick a number of reps, let's say 40 reps, and do as many sets as you can with 20 to 30 seconds rest in between. So if I'm feeling a bit tense or angry that day and have had way too many donuts than I should have, I would do one set full range of motion and one set partial reps. It's quite fun and it gives me an insane pump and saves time too. So win-win. As I said, I'm not really ready to move away from full range of motion. And even though there are quite a lot of studies supporting the length partials, there are still missing gaps in the research. Until then, I will just use both. Training using length and partials doesn't really contradict time-saving techniques. So if you're working a full-time job like myself, you can still use it. If you want to know more about time-saving techniques, you can check this video right here where I explain all the science-based time-saving techniques out there. See you there.